Welcome everybody, if you clicked on this video because you want to learn how to make Sega Mega Drive and Genesis games then you've come to the right place. This video will be an introduction to my tutorial series and in it we're going to cover four main areas. First of all I'm going to talk a little bit about what kind of person this tutorial series is aimed at and what kind of things you need to know beforehand. Secondly I'm going to talk about how I'm going to teach you and the methodology behind it. Thirdly I'm going to talk about what we're going to be learning in this tutorial series and what kind of things you'll be able to do with your console by the end of it. And last of all I'm going to guide you through how to set up your development environment so we can get started on the really fun stuff. Ok let's get started. I want to make it clear right from the start that this tutorial series is expressly designed for complete beginners. So if you've never tried to make a game before and if you've never even coded before then this is the series for you. Of course anyone with any previous game development experience on other platforms or people with computer programming experience especially in C have an advantage but this series is for everyone. Speaking of computer programming I think making Mega Drive games is a really fun and interesting way to learn to code. Especially for those of you with children, traditional ways of learning how to computer program might be a bit boring for them but whereas making games would be a really fun and interesting way to learn how to code and it involved lots of other things such as music and art and storytelling and so on. So I think it's something that they could really get into and become a hobby and through that hobby they could learn how to computer program. I know that many of the people watching this will have an idea in their head, an idea they've had maybe for years or even decades where they've wanted to make a dream game but haven't had the skills or the knowledge to be able to do it. But through this tutorial series I hope you get a start and you can finally begin making your dream a reality. Games of the 80s and 90s were originally developed in small teams anyway and with the tools we have available today it's not unrealistic for a small group of people or even just a single person to create their own game as long as they're willing to create all the art assets and music and game logic and so on. However that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to choose a massive project to do. You can also choose to do little mini games or demos like I did here when I created the Mega Drive version of the Squid Game game. And there may also be musicians and artists among you who just want to create maybe some graphics for the Mega Drive or some music for the Mega Drive or sound effects and don't necessarily need to know how to do all the game logic but would like to know enough so they can put their work onto the Mega Drive and onto the Genesis and see it running on real hardware. So whatever your level of experience or skills or knowledge or whatever your aims and goals are I'm sure you'll get a lot out of this tutorial series. Ok now let's talk about how I'm going to teach you to develop for the Mega Drive. I'm sure that everybody watching this recognises the gentleman on your screen right now. Yuzo Koshiro as well as being a musician of course he was also a programmer because back then in order to make music for these systems such as the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo you had to be good at computer programming as well as music. Like many people of his generation he first learned computer programming via these magazines which would publish these programs written in a computer programming language called BASIC and they would then copy them out and then they would learn programming that way. Now if that method sounds a little bit tedious to you don't worry I'm not going to make you just mindlessly copy line after line of code. But on the other hand I'm not going to go into great detail about the programming side of things I'm not going to give you lengthy explanations of pointers and arrays and variables and so on. Instead what I'm going to do is every lesson I'll give you a little task like put a sprite on the screen or some sound effects or music and I'm going to give you just enough knowledge so you can complete that task and you can use the code for your own purposes without overwhelming you with new information. Another difference from the old days is thankfully now we have a variety of tools available to us to make the development of the games and the graphics and sound and music such and so on much much easier than before. I already made a video about the how games are made these days compared to in the past so if you're interested in learning more then you can take a look at that video which I will link now. Ok so now I've already talked a little about what kind of person this tutorial series is aimed at as well as how I'm going to teach you how to develop games. Now let's take a look at what we're going to study during the course of this tutorial series and in true Sega fashion we're going to get off to a rolling start. As the music may suggest we're going to get off to a really rolling start with this series so I'm not going to waste your time teaching you the boring stuff first, we're going to get stuck right into the really interesting stuff. 
In the very first lesson, we're going to learn how to put both background layers on the screen. And in the second lesson, that's right, just the second lesson, we're already going to do some parallax scrolling. At that point, I'm sure everyone will be very keen to put their own graphics onto the screen, their own backgrounds onto the screen. So in the third lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create Mega Drive graphics and what kind of what kind of conditions they need and what kind of limitations and how to work within those limitations. Following those three lessons, we're going to be doing all kinds of things, for example, putting sprites onto the screen, animating sprites, putting sound effects, how to create sound effects, how to create music, how to play music, how to do the controls, how to do the D-pad, the buttons and so on. So we're really going to get a lot done. I think it could be anything from 15 to 30 lessons, uh, depending on how much, how long each lesson is. So I think you're really going to enjoy this series and you're going to have a lot of fun as well as learning a lot. Once the basic tutorial series is over, um, we're going to get stuck into our first project, which is going to be a Shinobi 3 clone. So in that project, we're going to bring everything that we've learned in the basic series all together and put, add some game logic and some collision detection and enemies and fighting and so on. And I think it'd be a really good practice. And for a first project, I think it's pretty impressive. If you're still watching the video at this point, then chances are you're very interested in doing the tutorial series. So why not now? Let's take a look at how we set up our development environment. Doing a whole video on how to set up the development environment wasn't something I was looking forward to, to be honest, because I always find the process very finicky and I don't think I'm the best person to advise other people how to do it because I always seem to make little mistakes that messes things up, even when I just update my SGDK. So I was very relieved when Matt produced this video very recently on how to set up the development environment so I don't have to do it. I'm sure that many of you are already familiar with Matt's channel. He's been in the Mega Drive Genesis homebrew scene for quite a while now and he has lots of great videos about how the Mega CD works and 32X works as well as development videos on his own games that he's doing for the Mega Drive so I encourage you to check them out too. Now if you just follow his guide on how to set up the environment and how to compile the ROMs and so on it'll be absolutely fine but I'm just going to add a little extra stuff here that after you've installed it following Matt's directions you can do. They're not necessarily a better way of doing things but it's just the way that I'm used to so it's what I'm going to be using in my tutorials going forward but you can still use Matt's method that's absolutely fine. It's just something I'm used to so just so you're not confused and if you want to try this method then you can follow along now. So once you have SGDK and Visual Studio Code set up as per Matt's instructions, you can go to the Extensions tab on the left and do a search for Genesis. Now once you do that, you should find a little extension called Genesis Code. I've already got it installed here, so I just uninstalled it quickly. And you can see it says Install, so click Install and that will install it for you. And it has a couple of nice features as we're about to see. If you just navigate back to the main C file, main.c here, and what we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal. So that's where we're going to compile the program. Now I often have an issue where the terminal will default to the Microsoft PowerShell. So what I wanted to do, I want it to default to the command prompt instead. So we're going to uh, click this arrow here, click specify default profile. And then at the top, you want to select the command prompt and that should fix the little issue about it defaulting to the PowerShell. A nice little feature of this Genesis extension we just installed is we can have a command where we compile and open the emulator at the same time. You just have to click Control Shift and P and then select the option that I just selected and then you have to put the pathway of the emulator. Now I did try and install Blastem and it worked the first time but after that it didn't work so if anyone knows how to get that working then please let me know so I think that would be useful but for our purposes even though Gens isn't as accurate as Blastem as an emulator I think it's fine for our purposes here we're just doing very simple programs so find where the you can find where the Gens is installed by going to the properties right clicking going to properties and copy and paste the pathway into that little command we just had. And now if we do Control shift and p again and we select compile and run then it would 
compile the ROM for us and it's going to open it up for us in the gems emulator so we can do everything in one single command which is very convenient. I'm going to provide a link to the gems emulator below in the video description as well as a link to a download where you can download a, a template project and it's this template project we're going to be using in all our tutorials just going to copy and paste it uh, you'll see how we do that in the next lesson. So I look forward to seeing you all there where we're going to be learning how to display backgrounds on the Mega Drive. I've been learning how to make Mega Drive and Genesis games for almost a year now and I know it's brought me a lot of pleasure and enjoyment and I've got to meet some really nice people so I hope that at the beginning of your journey of making Mega Drive games I hope that you have just as much fun as I have. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching and farewell.